Okay, so we have Dr. Angaraj sir with us to clarify on that. Over to you, sir. Yeah, hi, good morning. I think as the slides come up, um, and um, I mean, I mean, basically the talk is uh, we know the theory of gonioscopy, we know the theory of um, how we should do. We have enough resources today, which is rich in online. Can I have my slides also, please? So, finally, when we are sitting in front of the patient. We need to look at the angles and the way we look at it. What are the ways to see it? What is the lens you're going to choose? There's a wide array of uh, lenses which we have. So my talk is basically based on that. Can I have a pointer, please? Yeah. So, so basically, I'm going to talk on the wide array of lenses you have. Now, when you take gonioscopy as a tool in your outpatient, it's the, it's the gold standard for assessment. You do have a lot of automated machines which come and give you these, uh, you know, from NIDEC and from all those companies. Yeah, it's there, but this is your gold standard. So what you see is what you're going to take for treatment, not a picture or a report. We don't treat reports. We treat what we see in a patient. That's the basis of clinical examination. So the idea is it gives you a clear view of the angle structures and the pathology. And this is what is available in India today. You, you, in fact, I have left out a couple of them. But most of these I sourced from those uh, distributors, took the photographs, and then did that. So when we have these kind of plethora of lenses, it becomes very confusing to say, what is it that we got to use? And, um, if you don't have a subspeciality practice, then you would probably think maybe this is better or that is better, maybe six quadrants are better. So we come back to the basic question, what do I use gonioscopy for? I use it for clinical examination in the outpatient clinics to see if angle is occludable, open or closed. Are there angle abnormalities like a cyclodiasis cleft, a recession or a high femur? That's what we are looking, normal, abnormal. And then, of course, we have the surgical gonioscope. Dr. Satyan was giving you a detailed uh, video on that. Now, it's used for angle surgeries, placement of stents, especially the mix, which is, which is slowly coming in. Today, our focus is on the outpatient settings. So the choice of gonioscopy lenses you have is the direct, and you have the indirect. Now, in indirect, you have two types. One is a steep base curve, in which this base curve is steep, so obviously if it is steep like this and you're going to put it on the cornea, there's going to be a gap, so you need a coupling fluid. So that's why it's called a steep base curve lens. And this is the models of it. You have two quadrants or you have the three, three mirror type. Then you have the flat base. Now the flat base, when, when we know that the angle is very flat and you're going to put it on the cornea, there's no need for a coupling fluid. So these are the common ones. This is the Sussman. This is the Zeiss with the rod there. You can see that. No, this is the Posner's because it has a handle. And if it is a Zeiss, it has a forceps. It's called the Unger's forceps. It's not available now. Now, when we take the direct gonioscopy, of which we should all, uh, I, mean, I mean, when we look at it, it does have advantages, like Dr. Satyan showed you. It has a panoramic view, and you can visualize with both eyes. Now, initially, in the outpatient settings, this was done in a different way. You can see Dr. Alward's uh, picture, I will show you. But it had a lot of disadvantages. It, it had a steep base curve, which means you needed a contact fluid. And you had the slit lamp. Now, this slit lamp, is, which he is holding, is quite heavy. It's about like um, a kg. So what we used to do was we used to have a pulley on top and have a counterweight on that and use that. And you had this little indirect light over here, cold light from a light source, so that you could see with that. So it was quite a bit of uh, uh, circus by the time you could see the patient. And it is now not routinely used in the clinics, but we need to develop expertise for this because we are going to use it in the theater. So that's where it's going to come into use. So all these gonioscopes have their use. Then, of course, you have the steep base curve indirect gonioscopy. It is very useful while learning gonioscopy. Now, steep base curve, moment I say steep, that means you need some kind of a coupling fluid. So when you need the coupling fluid, it stabilizes the globe, 
So when you're learning, it stabilizes the globe, so it becomes easy. And only disadvantage is that there is no manipulation possible. And if it is the three mirror type, and if the pupil is dilated, you could also see the peripheral retina in case you're interested. Then, of course, the flat base, indirect gonioscopy, is what I recommend. When you're sitting in the OP, you have the six mirror variety, and you have the four mirror variety. The advantage is that you just keep it on the cornea, and you can see 360 degrees with the six mirror. You just place it on the cornea like this, and you can do your manipulation. You can take it to the side. You can give it a little compression. You can do an indentation by pressing to see whether uh, it is an occludable angle or how much you can open. You can look at the structures. So the advantages are, with indirect, is that, especially the flat base, you can view two, you can view, view four, you can view six, depending on your budget. You know, the six is a little expensive right now. And it is just direct contact with the, with the cornea. And you can, you can perform all the manipulations, and it's minimum learning curve. And the flat base, it has a disadvantage. The only disadvantage is if you put a little more pressure, what was actually a closed angle becomes open. And if you put too much pressure, you can get these small little indentations here, which is visible. So those are the small precautions you got to take, and I'm sure this is the learning curve is not so difficult at all. Then comes Indian versus imported. The Indian is around 6,500, and this is about 25 to 35,000. And I used both of them, I mean, just for this talk, and found that the Indian ones are pretty good, and um, the quality has improved. In fact, this is one of those pictures. You can see the normal. And then, of course, you can see a little bit of indentation. This is Dr. Alwards. So my summary recommendation would be that use the flat base when you're beginning and perform it on every single patient you get. Take the IOP, stick the gonioscope. Whether it's going to be open or closed or whatever, stick the gonioscope. So once you develop expertise in putting the gonioscope on the patient's eye, the patient is comfortable. It's the way you do it. So finally, when the push comes yeah, to shove, you know the theory, but you want to see the angle structures, you've got to put it on the eye to see it. So develop the expertise, make it second nature. Then your body language improves, and your patient is very confident of you putting the lens on the eye. So that's where it matters. So do it on every single patient you see. No interface fluid is required, so you're not making a sticky eye. And dynamic gonioscopy is possible, and the local the Indian four mirrors is quite impressive. The, I believe the six mirror variety is also coming. So in summary, I would say that start doing and start doing for every patient you see. Thank you for your attention.